Welcome back to Women in Focus. We interviewed Hema Bhatt in this program and uh, I promise that uh, because her conversation was so interesting that we will do a second episode of this. And thank you for agreeing to do the second episode, Hema. So when you guys decided, okay, Malaysia, your children were born there, your two daughters, but you know, for education you wanted to come out and you decided to come to Canada, how difficult or easy was it for your immigration? Immigration was an easy process because yeah. you just applied for some time. My husband had to fly over to the U.S. for an interview. Right. And all they wanted to know if he spoke English. <laughs> he, he was quite annoyed when he found out that's all they wanted to know because they asked him a few questions. Yes. And they said, oh, you speak English. And that's it. He says, of course I speak English. I was educated in the U.S. <laughs> So that was quite funny. He calls me on the phone and says, they only wanted to know if I spoke English. So do you speak English? I said, yes, I yes, do I speak English. <laughs> That's so funny. That, that was quite funny. And after that, you know, as the process got along, we, we were given our papers. Right. And that time to say you have to go in, mm. buy. And so that's when the huge decision came. Right. That now it's looking really real. It's going to happen now. Yes, it's going to happen. Yes. And that's when you get really fearful of yes. all the things you have to do. The people you're going to leave and you're going to go to this new country. Yes. And it was a good thing that we had friends in Malaysia right. who had a friend here. I see. And they introduced yeah. us and she said, you can go ahead and ask her all the things you need to know. Right. The things you need to bring. So we said, oh, thank God, at least there's one person here we know now. Right. Right. What area in the Lower Mainland did you decide to live in? So we decided to live in Coquitlam right. because that was the only place, the only home where we rented. This right. was a basement suite I see. where the owner said we could have a pet. Oh, you have a pet. And my daughter had a dog I see. which we brought from Malaysia Right. and she said she was okay with that. Oh, that so, so, so then Coquitlam became your... That's right. Huh. So we started with our life or well, from that home, yes. from the basement of our home, was where our journey in Vancouver, in Canada, began. Wow. So it was a two-bedroom, tiny little basement suite right. with four of us and a dog. <laughs> so, I can just imagine that, eh? And dog you, and children and, and mom and dad behind. Yeah. And, and you had to do all the work or did Harish help you with that? Uh, no, Harish was very good that yes. way. He organized everything with the shipping and the right. baggage. Everything came in. They started first because right. I had to stay back and attend the, uh, the wedding right. of my nephew. Ah. So Harish was here with the two girls trying to sort everything out. He got them enrolled in school. Wow. He got a car. He got the home. Yeah. And he started to start to set up everything even before I came. That was a week later that I arrived. So your business that you guys were doing in mm -hmm. Malaysia, did you bring that business over here or did you start a brand new business? No, here? we started brand new here ah. because that business there was with a partner. How, how was that for you guys, you know, a brand new country, brand new business? Oh, it was very difficult. I bet. Yes, it was very difficult because you had to work. He had to work like basically in the day from here. Yeah. And he had to work evenings all the way into 3, 4 o'clock in the morning as well. Right. Because Malaysia was open. And ah. trying to see how if you could buy, who are the customers in Europe and trying to sell. Mm. But what ended up happening was we lucked out where the mad cow disease Okay. hit the industry right and that's where palm oil came into the picture ah. due to the cannibalization of the product that's right that's everybody right. was interested in palm oil right and that's how we started and um, after staying in the basement suite for one year yeah we decided that we were going to move we needed more space we we're going to move and we needed a small area where we could have our office office as well so I it see. was two of us in the beginning right we hired a salesperson that was the third person in that right. home office right and after that you can only have three people in a home office <laughs> that's right more people come aboard you right. have to go out you have to have your own office. office elsewhere that's right right so moving here, that was difficult. I had to learn how to drive mm. on the other side of the road That's now, right. coming Malaysia, from Malaysia. Yeah, yeah, like England. And my husband just gave me two weeks and he said, I've, have, I've got to go back to Malaysia. Right. So you better be able to drive this van, which I've bought, 
and on the wrong side of the street and not kill anyone in the process. <laughs> there was a law, tall order. And that was. <laughs> and it, when he brought us in, it was December. Oh, no. So now... So snow. And when I arrived at the airport, I looked outside and at the terminal <laughs> and it was all white. It just decided to snow on the day I arrived to greet me, right? Of course. And I thought, I thought he said it only sold twice a year or <laughs> in that whole winter but, season, but twice that, to three times. Yes. Right? So that year it snowed a lot? That year I think it was like three to four times and I was like, oh no, there's a lot of snow here. So that was my fear. How do I drive in with snow. all this snow? Yes. Right? Because I was not used to that. No, of course not. So then I said, okay, I have to get on this case and make sure I get things going before he leaves. Right. Because he said, if you can't drive, yeah. then you walk to school with the kids. And that was... <laughs> and that was a no-no at no. 7.30 in, the, in morning the morning or something like that. I was not going to do that. No. And I said, I called, I called this friend of mine who I said, who do I get to get some learning skills of how to drive here? Yeah. So I went three or four times with that instructor and right. learned how to do it. Yeah. And I went very confident and prepared for the exam mm -hmm. because I knew I had no other choice. I had to pass or I had to walk. The walking was that not That was an not option. an option, definitely. No. And so I went and so fearful, could not sleep the night before <laughs> trying to practice and do all the things I needed to do. And I came out with a smile on my face. Beautiful. And he, so knew, my husband knew I had passed. The moral of the story is go there with conviction and you will win. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, well, that's so beautiful. Let's take a short break and come back and uh, go on with your journey a little sure. bit more. Hema Bhatt is our woman in focus today. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Women in Focus. Hema Bhatt is our Woman in Focus today. So Hema, <laughs> so you started driving and and uh, your husband is in Malaysia back and forth and uh, the kids wanted started going to school mm -hmm. and you were also working at the office. Yes, so the kids started going to school and right. we had the... Uh, the, the office, office, yes, yeah. the home office, and things started to move mm. forward. The business started to pick up, right. and uh, so we had three people in the home office. Right. And as we started to promote these products that we were doing, as yeah. I had mentioned to you, it's an energy supplement That's for right. the dairy feed industry, yeah. and it created more milk, it created more fat yes. for the yogurt makers, for the cheese makers, so it depends on who wanted what product. Exactly. Right? Your business started growing growing up and uh, in the meantime you your husband had a massive um, aneurysm that's right and so what happened so as you know with with every business you have a lot of work you'd like to grow so we had an office our first office was here mm. in Vancouver and then we set up the Malaysian part of the business because mm. we needed the logistics of where the products would be loaded right. to be moved to North America right. and then we also had the US entity which came on and then uh, we later we had the Malaysia uh, the Indian office okay. right so building growing all that uh, Harish thought he was this superhuman being who would be able to do everything and try to do everything fast because right. you know as you're growing you have to keep up with that growth yes. and uh, so what happened and in 2014 he I would say he was not managing his stress and his health not really taking care mm -hmm. of it he used to be traveling a lot as well and he was here when we were at an event we were invited mm. by one of the banks to a cocktail and that's when he told me that his left side was going numb uh, at I, the I, cocktail at the, at the, yeah. yes at the event and i told this uh, bank managers who were seated with us i said please hold him and bring him out mm. i'm just going to call 911 one. Mm. And in 2014, mm. just one week after his 50th birthday celebration, mm. that's when he suffered that aneurysm. So wow. it was a major bleed in his brain. In the base of his neck, in the okay. thylamus, they call right. it. And uh, he was in the ICU for two months. Wow. Yeah, he had only 25% chance of survival. Wow. And the doctor said they will know if he still has all his faculties right only after a month and a half. 
Wow, that month and a half must have been like years for you. Oh wow, that was, yes, that was crazy because every other day something would be happening to him. I would be in the hospital from morning, from seven o'clock in the morning, sit there till 12 in the afternoon because I need to speak to the doctors mm. when they came for their ward rounds to know what was happening mm. or from the night before. And then I'd leave the office and I would leave the hospital and come to the office from one o'clock and sit till five. Mm. And after five, I'll go back to the hospital again. And we took turns with my daughters who were still in school mm. and the older one was in university. So mm. whenever she did not have a class, she will go and sit and wait there with him. Wow. And that's when you also find out who your friends are, you know. They are the ones who came up and said, it's okay, you don't have to come. I'm from work, going mm. to the hospital, you can come a little later and things like that. So they really helped out a lot as well. Isn't that interesting? In being the support that we needed, needed at that at point that of time, right? But then work is work and yeah. you still have to go on with the things that you need to do, right? So I had to manage the kids mm. who were so afraid that their father was going to die because mm. he was just lying there in bed with tubes all over his head. They mm. had intubated him. He could not talk. Mm. And this was going on for already a month. Something like that happens to a person medically. Was he not able to, well, obviously not able to get up, walk, mm -hmm. his, no. his right, left side yes. was not working? Not, it was not working at all. Mm. And because you're lying in bed for so long, yeah, you your muscles start to waste. Yes. Right? So yes. he had no core strength at all. So he came back home. So that's when I also realized that you had to advocate for the person. You're right. Yeah, you are that person's voice and yes. everything you do is going to decide the treatment and things like that he gets. And that's when I knew I had to really be strong. Yeah. There was no time for tears yeah. because you can keep that ball for later. This yeah. is what you have to do now. Wow for this person because he's not able to do things for himself. Yeah. And then you have to look at the business aspect as well. So I used to spend my time in the hospital doing mm. all the things I needed to do. And then in the office, I used to come where the morale was really low. Of course. Now the president of our company is lying in hospital. Right. How is this woman going to do things and right. take things on and move forward? So after speaking to my managers, I said, you know what? I just like to speak to them and have a word with them. Let's have a meeting. Right. And I told all of them, I said, we have been working very hard. Yep. We started this company in 2004 right. and we have brought the company up to this level. Yeah. We have got a good team in all of you here. Right. So there's nothing lacking in this company and no. this business for it to continue to work and grow. I said, let's all do our part. Yeah. We have put in systems in place. Yeah. You all know of all your capabilities and That's what right. you bring to the team and right. how we have done it before. Let's continue to do this, make sure our suppliers are doing what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. and make sure our customers are happy with what they have been getting and continue to do that. Right. If you have any issues, just come to me and we'll see how we can right. deal with the day-to-day -day operations and stuff like that. And uh, sometimes when, you, when they say when it rains, it pours, you have a lot of other people trying to come in between in the business and trying to squeeze you. But I think, as I said to you before, I had two very strong women in my family. That was my mom and my auntie who I'd seen do amazing things. And I said, I have it in me to do it. Nobody is going to push me or yeah. break me. I've come this far. I've moved to a different country. Yeah. I've learned, learned how to drive on the wrong side <laughs> of the road and not killed anyone. Yes. And I brought these two girls here yes. to give them a better life. Yeah. And I'm this, not going to quit now. Yeah, and all this is also for them. Yes. Right? One day it's yes. going to become theirs. Yes. And so I'm not going to give up. And I took it from then to sit down and have this very good conversation with them. Yeah. And my manager gave me feedback and said, this is what they really needed. needed. They ne really needed to hear from you yeah. that you are going to handle these issues. They can come to you. Yeah. There's somebody else here that is just as passionate as he was to take things and get it done. And I'm so glad that, you know, that image of your mom and your aunt you know, mm -hmm. pushed you to do what you're doing. 
Yeah. We're going to take a very short commercial break, come back, because Harish is doing better now. Yes, yes. And both your daughters are helping you out in the business. And That's let's right. talk a little bit about your passion as well, because you're involved with so many different organizations that are culturally <laughs> vibrant, because you're such a vibrant person. So let's take a break and we'll be back. Sure. Hema Bhatt is our woman in focus today. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Women in Focus. Hema Bhatt is our woman in focus today. So Hema, what a beautiful story. What a strong um, feeling uh, when, you, when you listen to your story that the strength that you harnessed from your mom and your aunt is what gave you all the courage to fight it. So how is Harish doing now? Oh, he's doing much better. Yeah. He's a very positive person. I yes. think that's very important that I see. Yeah. When you have family support and you know the person has it in him to do it, yes. you know, these are just one of the things that sometimes strike you down. But yeah. if you're ready to get up and go, it's, it's very important to have that positivity, which he does have. Right. And so we have to enforce that by telling him he can do it yeah. and making sure he has everything planned for him. Right. So he has physio going for him and he's doing good. Does he come to the office as well? Yes, he comes to the office for half a day, but mm. he used to start with only twice a week. Right. Went up to three times a week. Now mm. he's in here five times a week harassing everybody. Of course. Of course, I wouldn't expect anything less <laughs> That's from true. him. Uh, you have your own passions as well. Mm. You know, you're involved with so many organizations. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yes. Um, what we have done as a family, when we first came, we know how important it is to give back. Yes. So I still remember when we were here, uh, and it was one Christmas, I think this was like three to four years in the business. Right. And we said, what are we going to do for the community? Right. And then I was at an event when I met this lady from Share Community. And she said, you know, we are in desperate need of food supplies. And so I told my staff, I said, why don't we have like a food drive? Okay. Let's do what we can do here. You yeah. bring in all the stuff that you guys want to give right. them during this can, time, yeah. this season, and we will just double that mm. and send it to them. So that was our first um, food, drive. food drive that yeah. we did with just the office staff okay. and us, right? And then they came back to us and we also supported their moms and babies right. program. So we've been giving to share regularly Okay. And we've also been helping with the hospital. Right. Eagle Ridge Hospital, where Harish was here yes. for his treatment, I saw a very huge deficiency where the patients were waiting to go home. I had to, I had to literally convert my home to be accessible for wheelchair, for his bathroom, for his showers, right. where, where he slept because he needed a hospital bed right. so that he could lift himself up and everything was easy for him mm -hmm. to do by himself because you want to make sure that he's able to help himself exactly. as well, yes. right? And so by doing that, I found out that the, the patients while waiting who did not have core strength mm. because they were not able to do rehab yet were not given a shower. And so only you could only have a sponge bath on the bed, but a shower just, just really makes you so mm. fresh, right? So, and um, I told Harish that it would be good if we donate mm. a shower chair to the facility so that the person who is there in your state will not suffer what you had suffered. Isn't that just beautiful? Oh my God. So we did that with yeah. the hospital, with yeah. the Eagle Ridge Hospital. We gave it to the foundation, a mm. shower chair. And we also do our regular donations to Royal Columbian as well right. and the hospital. And we, we, as a company, we have also empowered youth that yeah. are incarcerated. Right. So we empowered them by giving them some funds right. so that they can make music wow. while being incarcerated so yeah. that when they come out, they'll have things to do. That was one of the programs. And also, we have helped the Bhutanese community, new immigrants. Why Bhutanese? Because when they came, we yeah. had a friend who said that uh, there's this community here which uh, some people have forgotten. They're a small group this year. They are getting yeah. help from the government, wow. but we need other support. Right. What, so I asked them, what do you need? Yeah. They said, we need help 
could your children come and help them out in right. English and math? Right. So I got a few people who Involved got this thing done, got a school there, and helped them do that. So that was the other side of it. And um, I'm also involved with the uh, BC India Business Network. That's right. Because I have an office in India. In India, okay. And also with Canada India Foundation, which is more Toronto based. Right. And we do a lot of good work with India and Canada. Your story um, is a very uplifting story, uh, Hema. And uh, women who watch this program would probably be so um, empowered by what you are doing. So I bet there is something else that you can do for women too. Oh yes, I think we as women, we have this inbuilt resilience in us to do whatever we want to do. Sometimes right. we just need a helping hand, That's right. someone to tell us that we can do it. I think, so what's important for us women to do is the three C's are very important. Yeah. That is, you must have courage, yeah. you must have conviction, yeah. and you must have confidence. Beautiful. This thing will take you a long way. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? I see myself slowly stepping back yeah. because now, as I say, I've raised two beautiful, intelligent and confident women yes. in my home. Yes. And uh, my youngest daughter just graduated last week yes. from BD School of Business, Simon Fraser University. Wow. And she's joined us since March. And uh, so I have both of them in the business and I've decided to step back a little by taking one day off this year. <laughs> so I only work from Monday to Thursdays. Okay. Friday is the day I get to do whatever I want, yeah. right, for yeah. the community, people yeah. who want to meet me. Right. I find that so interesting when I tell people, I have time for you, let's sit down and have a chat. Yeah. Whether it's a lunch or it's a coffee, right. I get so much of understanding from them how things work and what they require. Right. I have a huge network and I'm able to connect people. Beautiful. It's, it's what I found. I'm yeah, able to I'm do that. I'm going to have lunch with her one day. Oh, yes, <laughs> we, we should definitely. Thank you so much for taking time and talking to us. My pleasure. It was a great, great opportunity that you've offered me to sit down and have this conversation. Lovely, lovely conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hewa Bhatt has been our woman in focus today. Don't go away. We'll be right back.